Hello, it's Christine Saxon, and I am here. I've pulled into a slough. So if you see around me, it's this lovely slough where both river water and ocean water come into here, and it's really nice and chill. So welcome to Paddle Your Own Boat. Um, I'm going to talk today about pulling your boat into a slough or pulling your boat up onto shore because if you've seen my videos before you know that I talk about and I share with you ideas about this this concept of paddling your own boat a lot of the people that I coach these incredible people who are so coachable so open to growing um, and are paddling their own boats and are really using leaning into that metaphor have been talking lately about the power and the need for a pause just to take a pause sometimes and if you think about your own life, how often do you pause? Right? Pause in your speaking. Pause in your response and your reaction. Pause and get off that hamster wheel or get out of the rapids like I just was in because the river's running pretty fast back there. I decided to pull in here and pause. And the beauty of the pause is not to pause to do something. This is what I'm hearing so much from my clients, from the people that I coach and, and from examples in some of the leadership classes when people go to breakouts and come back and go, oh, here's what we really talked about, is it's when they schedule time in their calendars to pause. You know, 15 minutes once a day, close your laptop, move from your desk chair to another chair, go stand outside for 15 minutes. That it's when they pause that they resolve. They get clear, they get um, re-engaged, reignited, and go, oh, that thing that some of you, if you've heard my other, my, some of my other videos, or if you've spoken to me or heard me talk, you'll, you know I talk about background apps. And background apps, what I use the concept of background apps to describe what happens to us. Just like when your phone, you look at your phone, you pick it up, you're like, why is my battery almost dead? What the heck's going on here? And then you check, it's like, well, it was just plugged in. Oh, there's apps playing in the background and they're draining the battery. So these background apps happen for us. We'll have a story going on. We'll, we'll still be in reaction to something someone said or something we said and wish we had said differently, right? And then these background apps are playing and they drain our energy hugely. So the power of the pause, one of the things that people are telling me that they are accessing through the power of the pause is that ability to just pause and go, oh, what's my background app? What's that story that's not going out of my head? And there's three questions you can ask yourself. What am I feeling? And then name the feeling. About what? And name the thing that happened, the triggering event, the thing that you did, the thing that someone else did, the worry that popped up. So what am I feeling? Name it with one, one emotion. About what? Name the thing, the event, and then why? And this grounds us. It brings us back from the amygdala, which is right back here. We've got an amygdala in our brain. You've probably heard of the amygdala hijack, or you might have heard of, of course, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. When we've got background apps playing, we're sometimes also stuck in a reaction, and we're reacting out of this part of our brain. Thanks, brain, for trying to protect me because the amygdala takes over and puts us in reactive state sometimes. So the power of the pause is that you can check in with yourself. You can realize, oh, I've got this background app running and it's draining my energy. Or you might just need a pause because you have been going and going and going. If you think of this for yourself, how often in your day, your work day, um, even at home, are you just on reaction mode? Like if we're a phone and we can set a certain mode, we sometimes, I hear this so often from people, they get to their end of their day and they're like, there's my checklist. I haven't been able to check anything off of it. I put out lots of fires. I reacted a lot. I solved a lot. I didn't do it thoughtfully, strategically. I can't even fully remember what I did. Um, and I feel dissatisfied because I didn't check boxes off. I didn't get the things done that I wanted to. Well, in fact, they have got a lot done. The power of the pause can help you go, wait, should I close my door for a bit? Should I put my voicemail on? Should I put my, my, you know, my message to, um, I'm taking a break for an hour or I'm doing some busy work. I'll be free at two o'clock, for example. The power of the pause is stopping, pausing, reflecting, 
and maybe actually doing nothing, just pausing. I hope you can hear the birds around me right now. They are reminding me that, you know what? Five minutes is probably enough to talk to you right now. So I'm going to hang up and I'm going to pause. And I'm going to enjoy just sitting here. And I wonder what you will do next to invite the power of the pause. That's funny because I just paused, but I hit pause too soon. <laughs> and I sat with it and went, huh. Sometimes the universe does do interesting things. So I paused and thought, you know what? I want to leave you with a little bit more than that. I want to invite you to think about how to incorporate the power of the pause into your life. Is it not listening to podcasts the next time you go for a walk, but just letting your mind be free? Is it writing down your background apps? I probably have, well, I have over a dozen people that I'm coaching or people from my classes who right now are choosing to do this. They've, they've got a new book that they have that they carry around with them, a blank book, and they write down those background apps. Several times a day they go, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? And they, they do those three questions and go, oh yeah, right. I'm exhausted actually. I'm halfway through my day and I'm drained. I can't think clearly because of the background app. So they have a book and they're writing them down. And then later in the day they commit to sitting down and looking at them and giving them attention. And that way your brain doesn't have to have them running in the background. The power of the pause for you might be going out kayaking or starting to play tennis with a friend or what? What would yours be? Would it be not scrolling at the end of the day, but going and standing in your garden quietly? Would it be going for a massage? Getting up and doing meditation in the morning? Having your morning coffee quietly rather than reading the news or catching up on things? And I invite you to pause intentionally because we are, um, and I do mean we, collectively, Everyone I'm talking to is needing right now. We're two and a half years into the pandemic. Um, it has not paused, even though we're talking about it pausing. And we, our brains are still on automatic and trying to protect us. So we're not naturally pausing and taking breaks like we normally would. And a lot of people are tired. So what can you do to fill your tank? 15 minutes a day and then maybe a day off, maybe a, a news fast. My, my spouse and I have decided, Don and I have decided that we don't look at the news anymore on the weekends. And for those of you that know this or know us, you know that uh, he's a news guy. He was a, he was a radio news anchor for his career and still watches the news all the time. And we both are feeling significantly more clear headed and more grounded. So what is your pause that you're going to take? I'd love to hear from you if you want to tell me. Okay, enjoy.